Claudette Colbert in Remember the Day on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company. This is the story of a gentle woman, a school teacher, and her faith in a little boy who, under her wise and understanding guidance, grew to be a great man. Since this inspiring story is typical of those who, in each generation, mold the future of the America we are fighting for, it is appropriate to bring to you today a special radio adaptation in which that charming screen player, Claudette Colbert, plays the part of the beloved school teacher in Remember the Day on the Cavalcade of America. Time, the present. Place, the lobby of a hotel in Washington, D.C., now swarming with reporters and news photographers, for tonight, celebrities are abroad. Into the midst of this important bustle comes an attractive middle-aged woman. She looks about her in half-humorous bewilderment. Calling Senator Green, Captain Fairchild. Calling Senator Green. Well, if it isn't... Why, Dill Tower, how nice to see you. Oh, jeepers. I didn't think you'd remember me. Oh, I always remember my boys, Bill. You know, that's why I'm here. I'm hoping to catch a glimpse of one of my older boys, Admiral Dewey Roberts. A- Admiral Roberts? Was he one of your boys? Yes, Bill, 25 years ago. Oh, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what. You sit right here facing the elevators. He'll have to come out of one of them. Thank you, Bill. Um, I'll be back soon. Thank you. Calling Bill. Senator Green. Captain Fairchild. I wonder if he'll remember. 25 years ago in that little school back in Indiana. I first met him. All right, children, let's settle down and finish our history lesson. Kate, can you tell us where the next important engagement took place in the War of 1812? No, ma'am. My brother Steve took my history book. (laughs) Now, quiet, quiet. Dewey, can you tell us? Can you tell us? Dewey, Robert. Yes, ma'am? What were you reading, Dewey? My book. Your history book? Uh, no, ma'am. The book by Christy Matthewson and How to Pitch. Oh, I see. Oh, well, Steve, you'd better tell us. Where did the next engagement take place? On September 7th, 1813, Commander Perry led nine ships in his bar. So was a brig, not a no, bar. Children. Hey, Bart, what difference does it make Boys. if it's an old sign oh, board? A bridge at you a square rig. Here, here. has got three masts. Dewey, be quiet. Oh, he's a know-it-all. That will do, Dewey. You'll stay after school and write 250 I beg your pardons on the blackboard. Oh, oh, that isn't fair. Now, children. Now, I have a pleasant surprise for you. Our principal, Mr. Steele, has given me permission to take you all to the matinee of Midsummer Night's Dream on Saturday. Saturday? Yes, Dewey? But Saturday's our ball game at Crossville. Mr. Hopkins says it all arranged. Who's Mr. Hopkins? He's our new manual training instructor. Oh, well, I'm sure he'll postpone the game. Oh. Now, now, let's all be quiet, please. Gosh, who do you think she is? What did you say, Dewey? Nothing. That's not true. Very well, after school, you will stay and write, I beg your pardon, on the blackboard 500 times. Now, who's the monitor? Come in. Miss Fernell? Yes? I'm Dan Hopkins, one of your associates. Oh, yes. How do you do? Fine. Uh, mind stepping outside? Oh, certainly. About Saturday, it seems we've got our signals mixed. I know. I'm sorry. Why not postpone the matinee? The tickets are arranged for. We're in the position of the irresistible force and the immovable object, aren't we? I don't know how immovable you are, Mr. Hopkins, but I'm afraid I'll have to be irresistible. You are? Well... Oh, well, here comes our principal. We'll let him settle it. Oh, hello, Mr. Steele. Oh, Mr. Hopkins, Miss Trinnell will be taking a grade to the theater on Saturday. But I need some of her boys. Let's manage without them. But, Mr. Steele... Don't argue, Mr. Hopkins. Good morning. Well, looks like you won. I'm sorry. No, forget it. Well, now we're friends, aren't we? Of course we are. Goodbye. Bye. All right, Dewey, you may go now. Dewey. Why did you lose your temper with Steve? Oh, he made me sore. Saying a bark and a bridge this thing. Oh, the dumbbell. Mm, but you were wrong, too, you know. 
What you described was a Bakken team. A Bach has two square rigged masts. You see, something like this. Gosh, how'd you know about ships? <laughs> I was born in New Bedford. My grandfather sailed his own ship around the horn. I've got all his whole charts. Maybe one day you'd like to see them, hmm? Would I? Holy cats! You know, I had you all wrong, Mr. Mel. Uh, perhaps we had each other wrong. You're not so much like a teacher. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I mean, I, I like to talk to you. I like to talk to you, too. And, you know, I want you to be a credit to me when you go to prep school in the fall. Well, I guess I'm not going to that school. But your mother said you'd already been enrolled there. Well, anyway, I don't want to go. You know, Mr. Mel, I'm going to see someday. I was named for Admiral Dewey. There's a picture of him in our house. Much bigger than that one of uh, Lincoln there. Oh, poor Mr. Lincoln's hanging crooked again, isn't he? Well, I'll fix it in a jiffy. No. Now, be careful. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Dewey, are you hurt? Oh, gosh. My knee. Oh, you poor darling. Oh, dear. I'm all right. No, it was my fault for letting you straighten the picture. I'm dreadfully sorry. Oh, oh. Here, Dewey, put your arm around my shoulder. That's it. Oh. Now, now, you sit here while I get... Oh. Mom. Yes, dear. But don't spill water on the rug. I don't know what Miss Finnell will think. Well, she understands, Chips. Well, there she is, Mom. Oh, Mr. Hopkins, come in. Come in. Thanks. I just stopped in for a split second. Hi, old timer. How's the name? Oh, coming along fine. Uh, let me see. How long has it been? Nearly uh, six weeks. Summer vacation starts tomorrow, and look at me. Uh, it's tough, all right. Where are you going, Mr. Hopkins? Oh, I haven't decided yet. Sort of depends. Well, bye, son. Oh. Don't go. Not just yet. Sorry, important engagement. Oh, well, that'll be Mr. Nell. Oh, it is? She's, uh, he's all right, don't you think? So it's different. Gosh, he's, well, uh... Yeah, I know he... what you mean. How do you do, Mr. Nell? How do you do, Mrs. Roberts? I want to thank you again, Mr. Nell, for tutoring Dewey in your spare time. Oh, I loved it. But he still refuses to go to boarding school in the autumn. Hello, oh. Mr. Nell. Hello, Mr. Topkin. Excuse me, folks. I've got a cake in the oven. Well, Julie, I came to say goodbye. Oh, you're going away? Where do you plan to spend the vacation, Miss Trinnell? At Willow Springs with the other women teachers. Oh, boy. How madly exciting. Well, I'm off. Have a good summer. Thank you. Bye, Miss Trinnell. Bye, Bye, kid. Bye. Julie, may I, may I look at your boat? Oh, sure. I made it myself. Oh, it's beautiful, Julie. The detail's perfect. What's it called? Oh, I hope you don't think I'm fresh. I didn't mean to be honest. Oh, it's the nicest thing anybody ever did to name a ship after me. I'm very proud. Gosh. There's nothing like ships, is there? Someday perhaps you'll be a great sailor, like Admiral Dewey. What do you think I could? Oh, of course I do, if you want to badly enough. You know, Dewey, you and I are pretty lucky people. We can do just what we want, because we live in America where people are always ready to defend their freedom. I never met anybody like you before. Never. You're very sweet. Sweet? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I know when you come back, you won't be my teacher anymore, but I'll be able to see you sometimes, won't I? Of course. Well, I must go now. Oh, must you? Oh, gee, Miss Tremel, you're beautiful. But you... Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a very pretty compliment, Dewey. Thank you. Goodbye. Take care of yourself. Goodbye. Hello. Oh, hello, Dan. I thought I'd make one more try. I've decided to go with the others, Dan. I've promised to. It'll be deadly. You'll go crazy. Listen, Nora, there's three glorious months of summer ahead with swimming and sailing and... Oh, how can I go with you? Easy. Buy a ticket to the same place. No, Dan, I've made up my mind. And I've made up my mind, too. The mountain won't come to Mohammed. Mohammed will go to the mountain. <laughs> Well, young fella, have a good summer. Oh, not bad. Did you have a nice vacation, Mr. Nell? Wonderful, Mr. Hopkins. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Nell. I love you. Oh, good. Oh, darling, we're going to be for bed. Here, why? Mr. Steele wants to see me. You won't move? No, not a step. I'll be right back. Good morning, Mr. Steele. You wanted to see me? Yes. Certain matter has come to my attention. A very delicate matter. Yes? I'm not attempting to judge your moral conduct, but I am determined to avoid a scandal. I'm afraid I don't understand. Neither would the parents of the children at this school. 
should they learn that you and Miss Trinnell had spent the entire summer together. Just what are you insinuating? That is an example to you, Mr. Hopkins. You are unsatisfactory. I must therefore ask for your immediate resignation. That's all. Now, just a minute, Mr. Steele. We'll not wait a second, Mr. Hopkins. You will leave today. As to Miss Trinnell... Listen, Mr. Steele, Miss Trinnell is entirely blameless. I, I deliberately went where I knew she was. Glad to hear that. If I unwittingly broke one of your rules, I should be the one to suffer. Quite so. You agree. And if I resign, Miss Trinnell needn't be dragged into it. Uh, possibly not. I'd like your assurance on that. Very well, you have my assurance. I'll depend on it. Good day. What did Mr. Steele want? What? Well, he had a message for me, a, a telegram from my brother. He has an opening for me in Chicago. A job, you mean? Uh-huh. Will you quit school and marry me right this minute? Dan, are you insane? Only about you. Oh. Dan, there's something wrong. You're keeping something from me. When are you going? Today. Today? The telegram said to report at once. Oh. It's only for a little while. Then we'll be together again. I'll be back at Christmas and we'll be married. Dan, you're quite sure you're doing the right thing? Believe me, darling, it's got to be this way. Well, I'll see you again before you go. No. Oh, no. Dan, I, I still can't seem to realize... Dan, I love you so. And I love you. Goodbye, darling. Till Christmas. Till Christmas. You are listening to Claudette Colbert in Remember the Day on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As the curtain rises again, it is Christmas Eve at Nora's boarding house. The doorbell rings, and she hurries to answer it. Dan! Hello, teacher. Glad to see me. Dan! Oh, why are you in uniform? Oh, oh, yes, the uniform. Dan. Uh, Lieutenant Hopkins of the Royal Canadian Engineers. Oh, but why? Look pretty snappy, don't I? I, I knew it couldn't last. I knew it. When did you... A couple of weeks ago. But your job... Nora, dear, there's no job more important than this one. I wish you'd told me. Oh, darling, I missed you so. I knew it was too good to be true. Nora, sweet, have you no confidence in me? With me in it, this war will be over by 1917. How long can you stay? I've got two whole weeks before I report. Two weeks? Dan, will you marry me now, right away? Lazy, Nora. She won't get up. Won't get up. Won't get up. How long have we been married? A week. I don't believe it. Well, then it's New Year's Eve. That's right. Tomorrow will be 1917. You know what? Certainly. What? I'm hungry. Oh, that isn't what. Well, what is? I've come to the conclusion that we're two of the nicest people I ever knew. Oh, <laughs> you may be. I'm not. Hmm? What are you? I, I'm hungry. <laughs> And you're beautiful. No, 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 darling. That's just your masculine ego. Though you think your wife has to be beautiful because you picked her. No, if anyone's beautiful in our family, it's you. You think so? Mm. You may be right at that. You're cute, too. Go on. No, you're the most <laughs> conceited. Just for that. Oh, Dan. Dan, why can't we stay here forever? being a soldier. Now, you see why he quit school? Well, I knew all the time it wasn't on account of any girl. It was, too. We just didn't know who the girl was, that's all. Well, who was it, then? Miss Chanel, of course. You're a liar. Why, everybody knows she suck on her. Oh, you're crazy. She wouldn't any more much around There's them. nothing so fierce about having a crush on a fella. Most all women get crushes. Come on, Steve. Yeah, not her. She's different. She's different from anybody. Hello, 
Oh, darling. I thought I might catch you alone for a minute. It's pretty hard to find any privacy around here. Oh, I know. Why not tell Mr. Steele? Ask him to give you a leave of absence till I go. I can't, Dan. Married women teachers are barred. I can't risk losing my job now. No, of course you can't. But do you realize I haven't seen you for two hours? Oh, it seemed longer. I'd almost forgotten how beautiful you are. Oh, I know, but... I'm in love. I'm so much in love with you that I can't see straight. Only four more days. Every minute more precious. Oh, wait a minute, Dan. I hear somebody. There is nobody there. Oh, my darling. <laughs> well, that's against the rules, too, you know. Kissing an eighth grade teacher in the classroom with the door open. Yes, Dewey? Mom, I want to go away. Go away? What do you mean, Dewey? I want to go to Johnstown, to prep school. But, Dewey... Please, Mom, I've got to. I've got to go. Dewey, I, I just heard you're going to Johnstown after all. Sure. I'm leaving tonight. Well, weren't you coming to say goodbye to me? No. I thought we were friends. What's happened, Dewey? Well, it's all right if you don't want to tell me. Oh, great guns. Don't be nice to me. Go ahead and laugh at me. I'm not laughing, Dewey, but I don't understand. Come on. Tell me what's hurt you, please. Well, I wanted to talk to you about something special. So... I went to your classroom. The door was open. And I saw you and... Mr... I see. I wonder what I should tell you. There's so much and so little time. You don't have to tell me anything. I'd like you to understand, Dewey. You're only 12. How can I make you see? I'll be 13 soon. And, Dewey, there's your boat on the floor. Aren't you taking it with you? No. Too with all that kid stuff. That's a fine way for a master to talk about his own craft. Is that the attitude you're going to take when you're captain of your own ship? I'm not really captain of anything. Yes, you will. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do now. It doesn't matter. But you will know, Dewey, and you'll find out something else. What you're going through now is a part of growing up. The part of learning. Oh, I, I know how it hurts to find out that the people one loves are not stars, but human beings made of flesh and blood. And when they disappoint you, you mustn't let it throw you off your course. Listen, Dewey, I'll tell you a teacher's secret. Each year, there's someone who stands out in the class, someone who makes teaching worthwhile, whom she counts on and loves as though that child were her own. You're one of those few, Dewey. You mustn't let me down. Stick to your course, sailor, and don't let anybody stop you. I'll try. Honest, I will, Mr. Mel. And you'll remember me a little, won't you? When you're a big man in our Navy? I will, Mr. Mel. Always. I'm glad you came. So am I. We won't say goodbye, hmm? Just good luck and fair winds. I'll see you at the station. Will you? Just sort of be there and wave. That way, I'd never forget. I'll be there, Dewey. Now, you're not going to cry. I can't. I'm all cried out. Darling, I wanted to be brave to make it easy for you to leave, but I can't. I'm selfish. You've given me the world, and I want to keep it. Keep it for me, too. Oh, Dan, don't go. You wouldn't want that. No, of course not. Oh, Dan, I'm afraid. I'm afraid of being alone. I'll be back. I'll always be with you. Miss me. Miss me a lot. Goodbye, Dan. Come back to me. 
Mr. Murphy. Looks like he's coming down any minute now, Miss Trinnell. Oh, boy, it must be great to be a hero like Admiral Roberts. Oh, look, look, there he is now. Well done, Admiral. Admiral Roberts, I don't suppose you remember me. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't stop now. I'm Nora Trinnell. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm sorry for the trouble. The banquet hall is this way, sir. Trinnell, Trinnell. Good Lord, of course. She's gone. Who, sir? Miss Trinnell, you idiot. That woman, find her. I'll try, sir. Oh, I ought to be kicked around the quarter deck. Here she is, sir. What? Miss Trinnell. Can you ever forgive me? Dewey, of course. Why, it must be over 20 years. Oh, by the way, this is Commander Stokes, Miss Trinnell. How do you do, Commander? How do you do? This lady once knew me better than anyone else in the world. Indeed, sir. She always said the right thing at the right time. The thing that set you on your course again. Do you remember telling me... Follow your course, sailor. Don't let anybody ever stop you. And you didn't, did you? Everybody's waiting, sir. Oh, now, just give me 30 seconds. No, no, I mustn't keep you, Dewey. I just wanted to tell you how proud of you I've been. You're much too kind. It seems like yesterday that you went away to Johnstown. How nice if time stood still. Now, tell me, what are you doing in Washington? Teaching high school. I've been here for 18 years. And uh, whatever became of... um... Mr. Hopkins? Yes, yes, Dan Hopkins. He was a grand guy. He never came back from France. I'm terribly sorry. Time's up, sir. Oh, you'd better run along, Dewey. Well, now, look. Come with me to this infernal banquet. I- I've got to make a speech and I'm scared to death. If you're where I can see you in the balcony or somewhere, maybe I'll get by you. Oh, will you? Oh, of course, Dewey. Gosh, you want... that's great. Arrange that, Stokes. Come on, Miss Trinnell. <laughs> In this country, we've had a long lease on freedom. But this time, we're going to own the right to freedom. We're going to stop paying rent in blood for a temporary peace. To do this, we must not only stamp tyranny from the world now, we must hand down to our children and our children's children a deed of ownership, a blueprint of democracy, so they may keep eternal vigilance that the democratic way of life The only way for us Americans shall never perish from this earth. He always was a good boy. Now, here is our star again, Miss Claudette Colbert. Thank you, Mr. Heaton. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for such a warm welcome to the Cavalcade of America. As heroines go, Nora Trinnell is not as well known as Dolly Madison or Betsy Ross, but I do think that in her character, all of us can find qualities that we remember in the gallant women, the school teachers who guide, inspire, and mold the youth of our land. I like to think that our play tonight is a tribute to their influence and inspiration. Thank you. Thank you, Claudette Colbert. (laughs) Now, a word about our program next Monday. A week from tonight, Cavalcade will present Tyrone Power in an original radio play, Young Tom Jefferson. on the Cavalcade of America, Tyrone Power, in a new radio play, Young Tom Jefferson. Appearing with Miss Colbert tonight was Tommy Cook as Dewey and Elliot Lewis as Dan. 
Our program was based on the play and motion picture Remember the Day by Philo Higley and Philip Dunning. Miss Colbert will soon be seen in the Paramount picture The Palm Beach Story. The music on Cavalcade tonight was composed and directed by Robert Armbruster. This is John Heaston sending best wishes from DuPont. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.